Very well, guys. So let's continue with the hammer right here. And uh, we're going to do this little details uh, of the like the bolts and things that we have. So as you can see, it's a single bolt that we just need to like multiply or, or position like several times. And we can, of course, mirror this, right? Like it, it makes no sense to do extra work when we can do things very, very easily. So I'm going to create a new uh, cylinder. And this is very important. We even though we are using high density on certain areas, if we can do things in a simple way, it's always a good idea to try to do it that way. So I'm going to make this bolt a 12 sided bolt, like a very, very simple bolt. And then I'm going to delete the lower faces. So this is pretty much just a, a cylinder with no cap on the bottom. Make this a little bit smaller. And I am tempted to just give this one subdivision, one fraction right there. So when we smooth, we get a slightly like soft effect. Now we're going to uh, position this. As you can see, this one goes on the, um, on the top part. Actually, did I? Oh, no, it goes right here. So we're going to make it smaller. Rotate it, I believe is something like 60 degrees. Should be something like minus 60 degrees. There we go. And we can just position it right there. We can go, of course, to the right view and find the exact position, which is going to be right there. And just make sure that this looks as nice as possible. Something like it doesn't have to be uh, perfect. As was mentioned before, sometimes doing things way, way, way too perfect makes it very easy to know that this is CG. And uh, I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to have this right here. And that's it. There we go. And that's it. We just need to create two because as you can see, uh, this one on the bottom, like this one, is a mirror of this one. So if we grab this guy right here and we move its pivot point with a V, to the center of this line right there, as you can see, um, even though uh, the arrow was up here, I can point to this vertex right there and tell it, hey, that's the point where you I want you to mirror from. If we do that and we go mesh, mirror, Y, object, because remember object uses the pivot point, object negative, and I hit apply, it should be, oh, we need to freeze transformation. So we freeze transformation and then we do apply. There we go. And that's it. We got it right here. Now we can grab this three guys. Let's combine them and let's do world X. And in this case is world X uh, negative and hit apply. It's going to be on the other side, ready to go. And technically we could grab this guys, say world Z negative and hit apply. This one is going to be right where it's supposed to be, but this ones are not, but that's an easy fix because we can go to right view, just go to vertex mode grab all of this vertex right here and just move them a little bit. This is what I mean by working smart and not hard, right? Like trying to find the tools and the techniques that we need to get these things to, to just like, or to position all of these elements as fast as we can to get a nice result without having to spend too much time. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, as you can see, we are missing a, another like couple of ones right here on the bottom. So I'm going to grab any of them, control D, then I'm going to, go to face mode. Let's grab that one. Shift select everything else. And there we go. We're left with one. We just need to enter a bullet point and go to the center. We've already talked about snapping to a point with V. You can also snap to the grid with X. If you press X, you're going to be able to snap this to the very center of the grid, as you can see right there. And now it should be fairly easy to just find the position for this thing, rotate it around and get it where we want, which will be right there. And this is one of the principles that took me probably the longest to understand, but also that increased my 3D skills quite a bit when I finally got it, which is when you do this sort of stuff, when you add simple elements, just cylinders, these are just cylinders, but they're everywhere. When you add this simple stuff, you can make very, very cool looking pieces very easily. And this is the principle um, that we use for the name of this chapter, which is complexity out of simplicity. We start with simple objects, and by using a lot of simple objects, we can create something that looks really, really complex. So we'll grab this one right here. I'm going to say mesh, mirror. This is going to be X negative and hit apply. And there we go. We got the bolts on the both sides right there. Now, the thing that we can do is uh, we can start working on some extra little elements. Like what, what kind of elements could we add to make this thing look a little bit better? Well, I, I like how these things are like connecting to the overall element but I also feel like it looks like a weak connection. I would like to have some sort of like extra support. And yes, we're going to be going outside of the concept art a little bit to create this extra support, but I think it's worth it. Here's what we're going to do. 
I'm going to select this guy right here. And uh, I want to, or actually, no, we don't even need to select this one. I'm just going to create a new cylinder. <laughs> Sorry. We're just going to start with a new cylinder. We're going to go right view, push the cylinder up. And if we want to make sure that it's aligned with all of the other cylinders, we can press X to snap it right there. Or V, in this case, I think will be a little bit more precise to snap this right there at the center. Perfect. We're going to change this to six sides again. We're going to rotate this 90 degrees to either side. Now that we have this, I'm going to push this to the border here. This is very, very common in games where there's like an extra like protection ring or armor ring on top of elements, something like this. I'm going to make this uh, metal, but I kind of want to make this so that, so that we can see the, the connection. There you go. See that little like lip or connection of the element? I want to see a little bit of it and then just push this a little bit more to the back. That, as you can see, is going to give us a really interesting connection. Again, simple cylinder, so might as well just bevel the whole thing. Two segments in a small fraction. Maybe this one right here, we can press Control and make it just a little bit smaller so that we can see a little bit more of this guy. Let's smooth it out. Now for this one, remember, we want to erase the faces on the caps so that we just have the, the main body of the cylinder. And there we go. Now this one, we can just duplicate and position it on this side right there. And look at this. It definitely looks like a dwarven hammer, one that you would use on the forges or something to, to create other weapons, right? And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it, my friends. Now let's go through some cleanup process. So first things first, I'm going to select everything, delete history, freeze transformation, center pivot. This should keep everything very, very clean. And I'm going to press a shift P on everything. Why shift P? We're going to talk about this in the in the rigging chapter a little bit more in depth. But when we combine and separate things, they create these things called groups, like this rock hammer uh, front and rock hammer front armor. They create these groups, and um, groups are a way in which we can organize things. We will use them in just a bit, but right now I, I actually don't want them, so I'm going to delete all of this guys right here. If you have extra cameras, you can also delete them. You should only have the, the cameras here on the, on the top. Now, let's start by combining things that are very similar. So, for instance, these two guys, which are going to be uh, the rock hammers, we're going to combine into a single object. These two elements, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. Actually, I mean, we could combine everything, but that, should we? I don't think so, because we're going to... No, let's go back. Let's go back, let's go back. Here we go, because we're going to do UVs and textures later on, and, and it's easier if we have things separated for, for the things that I want to show you. So just grab everything again, center pivot, delete history, freeze transformation, and we're just going to rename. So this is going to be called hammer rock front. And this is going to be called hammer rock And then, of course, all of this, like the bolts, for instance. No, that's fine. We'll keep this. This is going to be hammer bolts. And this is going to be pommel bolts. This is going to be called handle. Handle. This is going to be called leather handle A. And leather handle B. This is going to be called, I don't know, main connection. As long as you know which one it is or whether each, um, um, yeah, what each part represents, it should be fine. It's going to be called rock axis. And then, then we have a couple of that's going to be called uh, back hammer connector. This, of course, is going to be called front hammer connector. This is back hammer armor. And this is going to be front hammer armor. There we go. So now what we can do is we can grab every single object here, all of the geometries, and we're going to press Control G. What Control G does is exactly what I was mentioning earlier in the video. It creates a group, and this is going to be called Hammer a Group. 
And the cool thing about this group is it has its own transformation node, as you can see right here. So we can move, we can rotate, and we can scale every single thing that's inside this group as a singular unit. Now, the group, for instance, we can press the letter D and move its pivot point to the center of the handle. So imagine that this hammer is going to be uh, hold, uh, or held by a character. Well, you can use that pivot point to make sure that this is always on the hand of the character. And uh, that's pretty much it. Now, to just keep this thing um, ready, I'm going to save this, actually. I haven't saved. Wow. Let's call this hammer. Um, the last thing that we can do here is we can actually do a render. Remember that we've mentioned the renders are a really good way to showcase all of our improvements. Well, this is just the modeling so far, and we're going to be taking a look at some more modeling exercises. Uh, but it's a really nice model, and we can already showcase this for uh, to our friends or to our family and stuff. So I'm going to delete the image plane right here, and I'm going to create a new scene. Save scene as. I'm going to call this hammer render. And remember the phrase that I use quite a bit, work smart, not hard. Well, we already have a render scene for the barrel, right? So we can just say file, import, and we're going to import the barrel render scene and hit import. And what should happen, as you can see right here, is our two lights, our camera, and even the barrel is going to be here now. Very easy. Just grab the barrel. We delete it. We don't need it right here. We just need the camera and this thing. Well, actually, the, the ground we do need. I'm going to grab the group here. Probably going to make it smaller. That's a nice, like, pose right there. Let's go to the camera, panels, look to select it. Let's change the options here. Remember, we were using a square perspective, or so 2K square. There we go. And I'm going to grab the hammer. And just get into position right there. Perfect. Just make sure there's not no, no overlap or anything. And uh, yeah, we're ready to go. If at any point we want to return the, the hammer to its position, just remember, do not freeze transformation on this group. We're going to just zero all of these things out. So now I'm just going to make sure to go to system, GPU, perfect, and just say Arnold and render. And if everything is uh, working exactly as expected, we should have the hammer here render as soon as the GPU starts. Let me pause real quick and I'll show you the result before we move on to the next video. There we go. Make sure to uh, find the proper composition. One thing I'm seeing here is that the hammer is a little bit like off center. So I'm going to try to center it a little bit more, something like that. And now we can render again. And there we go. We've got this very cool model. Look at how nice the whole geometry looks. Really, really clean. Everything falls into place properly. And again, once we add like realistic textures to this thing, oof, it's going to look really, really, really cool. So I'm going to save this image for our uh, like um, evidence over here. We're going to call this hammer render. And we're ready to jump onto our next exercise. So hang on tight and I'll see you back on the next video.